Hi everyone, my name is Baker, uh, and I'm here to talk to you about getting us from the last lesson where we learned we did something called the circle triangle square activity for reasons that are obvious, and move us toward the binary number system. But there are a couple of patterns and things that I want to bring out because it'll make understanding the binary num number system easier. So we saw in the last class when we had one shape uh, or one place to put three possible shapes, a circle, a triangle, and a square, that with only one place there are three possible patterns, just the circle, triangle, or square by themselves. If we add two places, so we want to make a two-shape pattern, there are nine of those, and we can make them by saying, well, let me group the set of patterns that I already know about, and then I can just throw a circle in front of each one of those, a triangle in front of each one of those, and a square in front of each one of those, and this is a way that I can generate all of the possible two-shape patterns, and there are nine of them. And I can repeat this. If I want to make uh, three, I have three places to put uh, shapes. I can make three shape patterns. There are 27 of them, and I can make them by making a group out of the patterns that I already know, and then throwing a circle in front of each one, a triangle in front of each one, or a square in front of each one. And in this way, I can quickly and easily generate the 27 possible three shape patterns. To take the next step, once I have generated them, I can put a number, a decimal number, next to each one, and this can begin be the beginning of a number system because I have a unique shape pattern uh, mapped to a specific number. So this is the beginnings of a circle, triangle, and square number system, and I would just have to know which pattern maps to which numbers. So now, as a thought experiment, instead of having three shapes, imagine that we had ten possible shapes. So I'm going to put some. I'm going to put ten shapes up here on the screen. Now these shapes, you recognize them as the numbers that you're used to, but please know that they are just shapes. They are markings on paper or on the screen that a long time ago somebody decided had meaning and that they should come in this order. But they're just shapes, just like circle, triangle, and square. And you're so used to this number system that if you, with these 10 shapes, if you're given a number like 99 and you're asked what comes next, it's natural for you to reason to say, well, look, with at, once I'm at 9 here, I'm out of digits, so this has to roll back over to 0. Then this has to go up by 1, and 9 is also at the end, so it, that rolls over to 0. And then the next place value over goes up by 1, so 100 comes after 99. It's so natural to say, but there are mechanics and rules about how these numbers are generated, and they apply to all number systems. If we think of uh, the decimal number system like numbers on a dial, like on an odometer, where every dial has the digits 0 through 9, and they count up as the dial rolls around, once it gets to 9, it's out of numbers, and it rolls back over to 0, and the next place goes up by 1. And this mental model for how number systems work on an odometer works for any base, whether you've got 10 digits or 2. So let's pause and reset and switch this to a binary odometer. So binary only has two digits, 0 and 1. So if we start this thing rolling, once we get to 1, we're out of digits, and so it rolls back over to 0. And the next place up over goes up by 1. Now here we are at 1 again in the 1's place. That rolls over. <laughs> but then the next place, 1 is, again, it's out of digits, so it rolls over to 0, and the next place goes up by 1. And we can watch this, and we'll see that the same sort of pattern uh, for an odometer works. Every dial rolls, <laughs> rolls around continuously, and once it gets to 1, it's out of digits, so it rolls back to 0, and the next place over goes up by 1. And sometimes that bumps all of the subsequent places as well. We can watch them side by side and see how the decimal numbers and binary numbers relate, even if we start back at zero. So notice that it's still counting the same number of things, it's just representing them with different number systems, binary and decimal. So let's talk about place values. Um, with 10 shapes, so the 
if you think about the normal numbers, 10 shapes, every time you add a place, you multiply by 10 the number of possible numbers you can make. So if I have one place value, here there are 10 possibilities, just the numbers 0 through 9. If I have two places to work with, there are 100 possible patterns I can make, the numbers 0 through 99. And of course, if I have three place values with 10 shapes, then there are a thousand possible ways I can make those numbers, which you know as the numbers 0 to 999. We can do the same thing in a different number system. So if we imagine that with three shapes, our circle, triangle, and square, with three shapes, every time we add a place, we multiply by three the number of possible numbers we can make. So with one place value, there are three possibilities. With two place values, there are nine possibilities, and we saw this earlier. And with three place values, there are 27 possibilities. So every time we add a place to put a shape, it multiplies by three the number of things that we can make. So now, as a further thought experiment, either on the paper in front of you or just in your mind, imagine the number 4017. It's easy for you to do. You probably came up with this, but do you remember what 4017 actually means? These numbers are based, like the position of them, their place value matters. So we say that the four is in the thousands place, the zeros in the hundreds, the one is in the tens, and the seven is in the ones place. And so to compose this number, you're really multiplying that digit four times its place value. So this number is really four times a thousand plus zero times a hundred plus one times ten plus seven times one. That is how you compose the number. The same is true for other number systems. So where is this heading? This is, of course, heading to binary. So binary is a number system that only has two shapes. So we could think of them as a circle and square, although I have a bit of an animation here. That circle and square could very easily just be 0 and 1, and those are the digits that we typically use. Uh, but they are not necessarily the decimal numbers. They are just two shapes. So the same pattern holds uh, when you have two shapes. With two shapes, every time you add a place value, you multiply by two the number of possible numbers you can make. So with one place, there are two possibilities, zero or one. With two places, there are four possibilities, zero, zero through one, one. With three places, there are eight possibilities, and with four places, there are 16 possibilities. So every time you add a place value, it just multiplies by two the number of possible things you can make. So place values in a binary number, instead of going up, multiplying by 10 every time, multiply by 2. So for this binary number, we would say that there's a 1 in the 8's place, a 1 in the 4's place, a 0 in the 2's place, and a 1 in the 1's place. And we can figure out what number this is by multiplying 1 times 8 plus 1 times 4 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 1, which is 13. So this binary number maps to the digit or the decimal number 13 and we do it just by multiplying place values. Since binary numbers only have zeros and ones, constructing a binary number you're either multiplying a place value by one or by zero. So really the art of figuring out what a binary number is is just figuring out which powers of two add up to the number you want. And you typically start at the high end. So if I put zeros and ones underneath these place values, so this in black here there's a binary number, all we have to do to figure out what this means is we say, ah, this is a 32 plus an 8 plus a 1, and that comes out to the number 41. So that's the basics of how the number system works, and in your next activity you're going to build this thing called a flippy-do, which will help you practice a little bit more and see even more patterns about binary numbers and how they work. So thanks everybody, that's what I have to say, bye.